Yes. Next. Okay. As you know, <clears throat> as you know, majority of Jews still are not religion in Israel, and uh, there are still uh, liberal Jews who are not support uh, your ideas. So if you gain the power, how it will affect and impact the lives of those Jews and liberals? Sorry, again? The majority of Jews in Israel still are not religious. And there are still liberal Jews who are not support your ideas. If you gain the power, how this will affect and impact their lives. Most of my votes in 1984 when I won a seat in uh, Parliament did not come from r religious Jews. We were the only party based upon Torah which ever in the history of Israel received 80% of its votes from non-observant Jews. I'm speaking about issues which have nothing to do with whether one is an observant Jew or not. I'm speaking about survival. You think that when I'm cheered in Spartak neighborhoods, it's because of my, of my uh, yarmulke? It's because I say things that they understand. Why do Spartak Jews back me in such great degree? Because they come from Arab countries, and they lived under Arabs, and they, and they fled those Arabs, and they never again want to live with them. I come here to Minneapolis, and I find myself in the Middle West. Fine. Well, the Middle West is not the Middle East. Get that clear. In the Middle East, you don't solve problems over coffee and cake. Here, any problem arises, let's sit down, let's talk it over, coffee and cake, compromise, come out and we'll finish. You say that, we can work it out. The Middle East is a different mindset, a different culture. There is no compromise. There's a difference. So now, certainly the majority of uh, Jews inside Israel are not observant Jews. But that has no relevance to the issue which I raise. There are many, many of them who will support me until we move the Arabs out, and then Arabs won't support me, which is sad, but uh, it's the way it is. In the meantime, support me. Support me. <laughs>